Alright, so we're back, and we're going to go to the port forward part. So why is port forwarding important? Port forwarding is very important because it allows you to send your data to your friends so that your friends and you are synced at the same server. So whenever you do something, they know exactly what happens on their screen. Whenever they do something, you know, you can see what's happening on your screen. It allows everyone to share the data, and without it, there's like a brick wall in front of your computer that's not allowing any data to be sent out. So, it, and it, it requires no real effort if you don't have a router. If you have a router, that's where you're going to go into the steps that I'm going to provide. So, what I would recommend is if you did part one and you don't have a router, just go ahead and give your IP to your friend and when you do that um, see if they can connect if they can connect then you're all set everything's good and they should be able to connect because if you don't have a router there's nothing basically making a wall around your port when you have a router though routers are they make your computer very safe they close all your ports whereas if you just have an internet modem your co your internet company gave to you what they do is um, they, they don't close any ports. They're all open. If they're all open, they can send data freely. There's no wall, right? <clears throat> so this part of the tutorial is simply for people that have a router. Um, who And a router is just something that either broadcasts a wireless Internet signal so you can have Internet in the whole house, or it's something that splits your Internet um, so you can have many things connected to the Internet at once, like Vonage and... Um, you know your computer and such a note for Vonage because I messed this up while port forwarding you always want Vonage to be connected to the router you never want to be you know internet route internet Vonage and then router because if you do that you're gonna make two walls and then when you port forward it still won't work because the Vonage um, wall will be there too so just be very sure that anyone who has the router their setup is like this they're going from their computer to um, the router and then the router is going straight to the internet that's it they if you put anything else in the way like even a software firewall might mess with it so I would be very careful even putting up a software firewall anyways <clears throat> enough talking let's go ahead and show you how it's done for most routers to access them you go 192.168.1.1 that's usually the address to go to your router to go to your modem it's .0.1 um, but in this case, 192.168.1.1, press enter. It's going to ask you for security access. For mine, it's admin and there is a password. Press OK. You're on it. Every router is going to be different, um, but they're in general the same thing. You usually want to go to their applications and gamings tab, which a lot of them will have. As you can see here, I've got a Minecraft one, 25565, and I set it to both. and as far as what IP address you're supposed to put in, it's always 192.168.1. The last three digits are different, though. So to figure that out, if you didn't uh, remember from my last tutorial, you go to Start Run Command Prompt, and then once you're here, you go to IP Config, and it's your IPv4 address. See how mine is .1.101? That's what I did right here. .1. Dot 101. So all I did was type in the 101 part, right? Once you've done that, you have to uh, save se save the settings. And for some people, uh, yeah, you, you, this is the port, by the way, 31337 for Terraria. I named each application so I know why I'm opening each port. That's basically saying, so whenever I'm playing um, a game and it's accessing this port, it's allowing that port on both TCP and UDP to broadcast the data at this IP address so um, it's gonna say anyone connecting to me is gonna have the data come from this IP address now once you've done this and you've clicked save settings and it says okay I'll, I'll save the settings continue you need to find out what your IP is so go to what's my IP enter on Google now I'm not gonna click this because if I click it you'll see my IP I'm gonna click on the cache Google caches every page um, so uh, what that basically means is Google visits sites for you and saves every couple of days a picture of that site so I'm gonna go at Google's version of this I'm gonna click the cache 
what you would do is you would just go to the site. I'm doing this so no one sees my IP. When Google visited this website and saved this picture, Google's IP address was this. So if Google were playing Terraria, <laughs> Google would copy this and send this to its friends. Um, and the same thing with you. When you come to this website, it'll tell you your IP address, copy it, send it to your friends. Now, in Minecraft, you always had to add the port. You had to do 25565. In Terraria, you don't do that. You just give them this. And what your friends do is when they go to open the game, they're going to just put this, they're just going to type this in, that's it. They're not going to type in the port. So your friends are going to put this IP address in, which is when the one you find out by going to whatsmyip.com. And what you're going to put in when you want to join the game is you're going to put in your IPv4 address, which again, you get IP config on command. This is what you're going to put in to join the game. So you're going to type in join this server and your friends are going to type in join this server because you're local and they're not local. So you, the way you connect is much different than the way they connect. There's two different doors, right? And then hopefully everything should have worked out. And again, this is only the second part of the tutorial of port forwarding. It's only for people who have put up walls around their internet by either using a router um, or some other device. If you don't have a router and it's just you and the internet, that's it, it's a direct connection, most likely you won't need to do this, okay? Um, but yeah, that's basically it. Oh, and be just a few notes. Um, the makers of the game were very smart. They knew that they couldn't just leave the game as it is uh, without ramping up the difficulty. So, if you're expecting to play on multiplayer with 10 people and have it be the same difficulty, that's not going to be the case. What's going to happen is, the more people you add, the harder the difficulty of the game. And the reason for that is, so that the game doesn't get too easy. So keep that in mind. If you invite four people and you guys don't work together, you're going to get cream. The amount of zombies and those one-eyed creatures and such that attack you is going to be through the roof. So. Multiplayer is super fun, but work together um, so that you can defeat your enemies. If you aren't working together, the difficulty is going to get ramped up. I mean, uh, the, and it's going to be, and it, it ramps up pretty fast. I believe it's 50% harder per person, from what I read. I had two people just to start, and we had in our first night something like 20 zombies in one minute. Like it just got nighttime and we got swamped. That was one other person. So imagine how 10 other people, how hard it'll be. So, okay, enjoy your multiplayer fun. Um, make sure you port forward if you have a router. If you don't have a router, then you don't need to. Your port is already open. There's nothing blocking it from sending in signals. Um, and if you have any questions, leave them in the comments, and I'll try to fix your issues if you have any specific issues. But, yeah, that this has been my tutorial for how to create your own server. Uh, enjoy Terraria, and... Uh, hopefully I'll see you guys in the next tutorial. Take care.